It's literally that easy. Well, then you have to tear this up into a lot of little smaller pieces, take a picture of it, scan it into your computer, bring it into Photoshop, do a quick selection, then feather the edges a little bit with the Refine Edge Brush tool, crop that image, save it out as a PNG, and then you've got your torn paper texture. But I can save you time. I'm gonna give you the texture we use in this video for free because this video is brought to you by creativemarket.com. And if you use the link I love.creativemarket.com slash pixel and bracket, I'll make sure to put it in the description, maybe the top comment on the video. You can not only get 10% off your first purchase and six free goods, but you can also get the texture that I did here. If I can get up to 25 new followers over there on my account, which all you have to do is sign up for a free account to do that, then I'm gonna put this in the description to download the texture we use here and save you a bunch of time. Creative Mark is a great place where you can buy and sell premium high quality design assets, including stuff like paper textures, fonts, and other graphics. So I'd highly rec recommend looking around Creative Market as well. And, uh, and like I said, 25 of you, that's all I need, and I'll put the link in the description. For now, let's get started. I'll show you how to create a torn paper effect in Photoshop. The first half of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to cut out your own paper asset. So just in case you've actually scanned in your own piece, uh, just like I did here, or you've taken a photo of it, or maybe you've downloaded something or purchased something that has a background and you need to cut out that piece of paper. We're gonna make a quick selection first with a pretty large size brush. Photoshop can see the edge fairly well, especially if you scan or take this photo on a darker background like mm -hmm. I did here. So when we zoom in, we can see that it's, it's captured a lot of the edge, but it hasn't got the fibers along the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and create that mask. And then on the mask in the layers panel, we're gonna double click it. It's gonna take us into the select and mask. And I'm gonna zoom into the edge here. And in the view mode in the upper right, I'm gonna switch it to black and white so we can really see the contrast between the edge. We're gonna select the Refine Edge Brush Tool, which is one that you've probably used or seen before when cutting out hair in a photo, uh, potentially seen it in a hair cutout tutorial. So we're gonna use this brush and a fairly small brush size to paint along the edge and just let Photoshop do the work. You can see that it's picking up all those fine details along the edge very well. That's, that's the point of this brush, just to sort of pick up all those fine details. And depending on the scan and how it properly focused, some, some areas might be a little bit blurrier than others, but you can see just how well it's picking up all that detail along the edge. Now you don't want your brush size too big. If it's too large, it's gonna pick up too many pixels way outside of the paper edge, and that's gonna really throw off drop shadows and just give you unwanted pixel data that isn't a part of your actual image. Once you've made your way around the edge of this image and hit OK, it's gonna apply that mask to your layer. And we can see over here that I've already cut out the entire paper asset so that we can use it really quick here. And it's got that fine detail all along the edge. And I put just a quick little background layer so we could see that here. And if you add in potentially a drop shadow to this layer, your piece of paper is gonna look a lot like that original image that we had. So if I turn off the mask here, you can see this is our original scan. And over here, I've just added a small drop shadow to it. And these two look very similar to each other, but in this one, it's completely cut out and usable. Now, a quick way for you to sort of save this down as a PNG, or you can save it down as a PSD, Photoshop file if you want to, is to hold Command or Control and click on the layer mask. And then what we're gonna do is go up to Image Crop. That's gonna crop to the edges of our piece of paper. And I'm gonna hit Command or Control D to deselect. I'm gonna turn off the drop shadow and also turn off the background layer. So now we just have that piece of paper and I can save this out by going up to File, Save As, and quickly save it out as like Paper Texture PNG. So that would be how to cut out your own paper texture to use in your work. So if we move on to actually creating something like you saw in the thumbnail, we've got two photos here stacked on top of each other. And I simply wanna mask out the top photo and show a little bit of the paper edge as well and maybe add a bit of a drop shadow to create that cool sort of torn paper effect that you saw in the thumbnail. 
First, I wanna bring in the piece of paper. So we're gonna to go to File, Place, Embedded, find our paper texture PNG and just place it in our document. I'm gonna hit Enter to just place it right in there. And we've got this piece of paper. So I'm gonna zoom out just a touch, use Command or Control T and scale this up. Don't have to hold Shift these days. I'm just get this torn paper right about in the center of my page, right in there and hit Return or Enter. That's gonna place it right there and commit the actual transformation. And you see it's on top of this photo. So like we did before to make that selection with the mask, I'm gonna hit Command or Control and hold it and just click on the thumbnail of my paper texture. And that's gonna give me a selection of that texture. I'm gonna go down to the first photo, the one that's on top that I actually wanna make it look like it's cut out. And I'm gonna create a mask on top of that. So now if I turn off this paper texture, and it looks like we have this sort of torn edge effect to the top photo. Now what I wanna do is make a little bit of that paper kinda of come over the, or come underneath the edge of this torn edge that we have in the photo just to help uh, kind of make that look a little bit more like it's torn paper. And so if I move the paper texture underneath and just move it outside of the edge a little bit, that's gonna create sort of this torn edge. And you could use any edge, you could rotate the piece of paper or use sort of any edge, scale it up, scale it down. We can even warp it a little bit. So if we Command T or Control T and then right click on that transformation and go to warp, we can do a little bit of warping along this edge to make it look different than uh, what the mask looks like. And we can really sort of create that torn paper look however we want. The last thing I would do to this paper texture is add a little bit of a drop shadow to it. And this drop shadow is obviously too much, so we're gonna scale that back. The distance shouldn't be that much. Maybe up the size some, up the spread a little bit, and then up the opacity some. We wanna keep it on multiply though, so that it multiplies with the background. We're gonna hit okay there, and that gives us that little torn paper look. We can customize this however we want. We can move this paper around, we can rotate it like I said, and create different sorts of torn edges, and then use the warp to sort of transform what that edge looks like if you want to. If you don't like maybe some of the background color coming through, you might see it in some places along your paper texture. You can go to adjustments and just make sure that that piece of paper is totally black and white. We can clip it to only the paper texture layer by holding Option or Alt, and that's gonna make this black and white and take out any color that was in it previously. And there's just a little bit here, it's not as noticeable, but you might have some of that depending on how well the quick selection and select and mask did for your texture. All right, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Like I said in the beginning, it's brought to you by creativemarket.com. You can get 10% off by using the link down below. I love creativemarket.com slash pixel and bracket. Uh, would really appreciate if you guys use that link and go over there. Follow me on there. If anything, just create a free account, download some free assets. Uh, that'll let them know that I sent you their way. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, learned a couple things about uh, the torn paper effect. Um, I actually use this a lot this year for Pacers Gaming and I do the exact same thing here. It's really easy to create your own textures if you want to um, and just scan them in and very quickly select them and use them in your designs. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm Spencer from Pixel and & Bracket and I'll see you next time.